appreciate that. Listen, I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. I appreciate that kind and generous and really, truly inspiring introduction by my good friend. And I'm proud to stand with my friend, and I'm grateful to have his support, Herman Cain. And listen, he's off to help somebody in Richmond. So let's give him one more round of applause. He's a good man. He's here at no cost. He's here because he cares about America. For those of you who know me well, know that my eyes don't adjust very well to the sun. So I'm going to keep these on. But uh, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you being here. And I mean this really from one American to another. Thank you. It's a great encouragement for me to have you here and for my family to have you here. And I have some wonderful introductions to make just very quickly. I have, uh, you know, just two things on the bucket list of life. One was to marry a really pretty girl from astronaut high school named Terry McCotter and turn her into Terry Ritchell. And the other one was to become the drummer for hotcakes. Only one of those two goals have been achieved. But anyway, Terry's here, and, and y'all who know her love her. She's so dear. She stands with us. If she wasn't with me, I couldn't do this. Thank you, Terry. Our wonderful daughters, our oldest daughter, Lindsay, our very youngest daughter, Shannon, and our in-between daughter, Mallory, is with our two wonderful grandchildren somewhere. And then we, we, we've got... Uh, our, I don't know where Mallory is, but she's out there with our grandchildren and our wonderful son-in-law. Uh, uh, I've got his name, Jackson Andrews. Good gracious. Listen, where's Jackson? My honey buddy, thank you. And, and Little Parks and Reese, our dear, uh, sweet granddaughter. I hope you all get to meet them. And, and just as... Uh, Herman was saying, just as Herman was saying, his inspiration is his grandchildren, and that truly, truly is mine as well. You know, I was going to, today, I was going to just come out and say, hey, listen, it's happy, it's a birthday party, and just say, thank you for being here. I ran that by Terry, and I mean this, this happened a couple hours ago, and she said, Scott, you need to do more than that. You need to, you need to share with people what you're doing, and, and where we're going as a country. And so, with your indulgence, I just want to take a few minutes and do that. Um, I no longer, you know, I never have really said that it's an easy lift. In fact, I've said it's a difficult lift to keep our, uh, our republic in the center of the channel. So, just bear with me here a little bit. If you got to get up and get a drink or something, do that. But we're going to talk about our district. We're going to talk about our country very quickly. I first want to give you an update on how I'm serving the district. Then I want to cover very briefly the national, the key national issues that are facing our country. Third, I want to talk about my deep commitment to change Congress rather than having Congress change me. And then finally, just close with, with really a challenge to you of how you can and should be involved. Let's start with the district. Think of it as the letter J, a capital letter J. And this long part of the J is, it, it's all the way from the Maryland line north all the way to the North Carolina line right to the south. This is all the beautiful and wonderful second district. If you go all the way up to the north, it's Accomack County, and we've got the city, the, well, the town, rather, the beautiful little town of Chincoteague. And listen, Fish and Wildlife just wants to run those folks over, I'm not kidding, with a job-crushing plan to block parking from, that, uh, from, their, from their beach there at Assateague. And listen, we've gone head-to-head -head with Fish and Wildlife and said, you can't do this. It's not the will of the local people. We're having success in that area. And then they have a, a, a Wallops Research Park that they wanted to build. They, this has been going on for a couple of decades, just trying to get this uh, research park done. But there's a 30-plus-year-old uh, restriction on what the land can be used for. And uh, they came to our office and they said, Scott, Mayor Jack Tarr said, Scott, I need some help. And so we went to bat for them, and it was a really wonderful experience to be on the House floor and see our bill pass that lifted that deed restriction. It was a bipartisan bill, Democrats and, uh, Democrats and Republicans voting together. And then the very next day, John Thomas, our legislative director, comes in. He says, sir, I think that Senator Warner introduced this bill in the Senate. I said, really? Verify that. He did verify that Senator Warner, even without me asking, had introduced that same bill in the Senate. And so I called over there and talked to Mark, and I thanked him for, for introducing and that bill. About 300 in Accomack County uh, right there because of that and 300 life-changing jobs. We're going to talk about even more jobs as we come down the 2nd District. 
The little island of Tangier, it's atrophied, it's got some uh, severe erosion problems, and notwithstanding what was written in the Virginia Pilot today, what, which frankly wasn't all that accurate, uh, we've got innovative ideas, and, and we're working Esmel, where's Esmel? Esmel is heading that up, effort up right there to use some very, very low cost ways to mitigate the erosion there on that wonderful and beautiful part of the district, Tangier Island. Well, if you look to the east here, right out here, there is wonderful job creating potential in Virginia Coastal Energy. I ran on this platform, the governor ran on this platform, the House of Delegates has approved it, the state senate has approved it, and we want to in a very environmentally friendly way, in a very uh, environmentally responsible way, we want to leverage Virginia Coastal Energy, and I introduced the Mid-Atlantic Jobs and Energy Independence Act, and I'm very excited about the opportunity that we have to unleash the tremendous job-creating potential right off the coast of Virginia. Now, we need to reconcile or attempt to, it really can't be done, with what the president is saying about energy and what his actions are. This is not a partisan statement. This is just me walking through the reality of it. I truly believe I was the first person, one of the first representatives or senators to stand up and applaud the president when he was in the joint session addressing the House and the Senate in the State of the Union speech when he said, I'm an all of the above president. And uh, I, I just, on energy, so I left up, I was clapping, supportive of that. But you know, here's the difference. I've told you about this bill, and out here through Secretary Salazar, the president through Second Secretary, Secretary Salazar has made absolutely clear a full moratorium on moving forward, a full moratorium. And remember, the state senate, house of delegates, the district uh, representative who serves in Congress, the governor, the collective wisdom and will of Virginians is to move forward, and they have a full moratorium. This is a full moratorium on 18,000 jobs. That's the best estimate we have. 18,000 life-changing jobs. We need this for our inner cities. We need this for our college graduates. We need these jobs for our children. We need these jobs, quite frankly, for one another. And we need these jobs for the, for the income it produces, the tax revenue that it produces, so that we'll have better roads and better schools. And I'm deeply disappointed that the president, what he's saying and what's actually happening, there's a, there's a great disconnect. We come down to Virginia Beach here, and what a privilege it is to, it just kind of reminds me of the great privilege to serve and represent the district that has the highest concentration of men and women in uniform in the country. And I see so many of our veterans today here. Thank you for serving. We thank our Blue Star families, those who have a loved one serving, and with deep respect and reverence, we honor and remember and stand with our Gold Star families, including at least two families I know of who are Gold Star families here today. We just put our arms around them and we stand with them. Some of the ways that uh, I'm doing that is with respect to TRICARE. I truly believe that it's a breach of trust for our government to, 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 to increase the cost of TRICARE to our men and women in uniform and our retirees. I really believe that. And we've, I've introduced a bill called Less for Jets and More for Vets. Basically, it's eliminating a tax loophole. Actually, the President and I are in full agreement on this. He proposed it. It's a good idea. And listen, when we have common ground, we have to have the courage to say, yes, this is common ground and vote for it. And I hope this bill gets through. I'm working with Eric Kanner, our majority leader right now, to get it to the floor. And I think we will get it to the floor. And now, listen, I was a little old E-5 uh, sergeant in the Marine Corps Reserve, and I'm quick to share with folks. All I did was drive a deuce and a half around Orlando, Florida. No one ever shot at me. But I tell you this, I can really identify with our young enlisted folks. I really can. I get it. And when I walked in those homes uh, all across uh, uh, Norfolk and in Virginia Beach for our lower ranking enlisted military, just, just these homes had a massive amounts of uh, mold. And I can tell you, the acid test for me is this. Would Terry and I live there? Doesn't need to be the Taj Mahal, doesn't need to be all that nice, but is it clean and functional and safe? And the answer was a definitive no, it wasn't. And so we raised the, the alarm there. And uh, we've got a bill that just, you know, the, the language was just incorporated last week into the National Defense Authorization Act. Thank you. It's giving us more insight into the secretaries of the respective departments, the authorities.
clarity they need and really calling on them, requiring of them to be uh, diligent and to making sure that our enlisted uh, quarters are just perfectly satisfactory and safe. Well, you swing on over uh, to the civilian world for just a moment, and has anybody here either had problems with Chinese drywall or know someone who's dealt with it directly? Anyone here? Anyone here? You know, maybe five or six percent of the population. It isn't all that much, y'all, but for those who are experiencing it, it is devastating. Through no fault of your own, you either build a home or you remodel a home only to find out that it's truly uninhabitable. You think, well, I'll go to my lender. No relief there. You think, well, I'll go to my insurer. No relief there. There's no relief anywhere. It's amazing. The builders, they go out of business. The manufacturer, you can't, of the drywall, you can't, you can't get through. Well, listen, I've met with the ambassador from China to the United States in his office, and I said, Mr. Ambassador, I said, you get this straight, or I'm bringing this bill to the floor, and it's not a bill that he wants coming to the floor, and we're working on that. I'm working with Senator Warner on the same issue. And we're going to be, we are not going to let go on this issue till we get it right. Now, thank you. Then he circled around to Norfolk. And it was a, a real sense of uh, uh, satisfaction for me as we worked so hard collectively as a region, uh, all of us in a bipartisan manner, as a delegation to Washington. To make the case to the Navy, I met privately with Secretary Mavis. I met uh, right there in my office and in his headquarters with uh, Admiral Greener, our CNO, Chief of Naval Operations. And I said, this decision to improve Mayport is not a wise investment of our money, particularly considering the other things that we need uh, to fund and support in our military. And I was really relieved that ultimately they saw the wisdom of that argument and those improvements are not being made to Mayport, which means that the carriers stay here on the East Coast, which is where they ought to be. And then I'll wrap up the district service by this. You go up to Fort Monroe, and so many times when we've gone to Richmond and beyond, we go right past it, don't think a whole lot of, of uh, you know, can just go right past it. You know it's beautiful, you know it's special, but there's so much unique truly unique American history there, what occurred there with General Butler and his legal decision to declare uh, the slaves who were seeking freedom to declare them contraband. This is a pivotal, pivotal moment in American history and a good one in a most painful time in our country. It needs to be remembered. It needs to be taught to our children and our children's children. And I am not a big believer in expansion of federal ownership of anything. In fact, I'm for the exact opposite. But those few acres there, we needed to memorialize that. It's very proper and fitting for it to be a national monument. And I had the privilege of being in the White House with the president. Someone said, Scott, are you going to go? Absolutely. He's the president of the United States. He's signing a good bill. I'm proud to be there. So I was in the White House when that, when that beautiful place was declared an historic monument. That's a good decision. Lots of different things, breaking through uh, barriers with HUD for different businesses in the area, just breaking through barriers all the time. People call us, they say, Scott, we're having problems with this one department or another. We do that all the time. But let's look at the national issues very, very quickly. If, uh, you know, if I ask, we are on a precipice, a fiscal precipice that is of the highest order. I believe it threatens the very foundation of our republic if not addressed in the short term. And I've been saying in the next three to five years, we have to have a comprehensive agreement. Now, I was with a, uh, another sen uh, with a senator the other day. I walked over because it's very important to me that we make friendships in the other body, in the Senate. And I was sitting down with this senator, and I said, look, I think we have uh, three to five years. He said, and he's a CPA. He said, Scott, I think we got two. Let that soak in. Two years, what, is he, what do you mean? Well, what happens in two years? There's not, a, there's not a family, there's not a company, and there's not a country as strong as the United States is. There's not any country that can ignore the 